about to leave Already packing Come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away To a place where we don't know About to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Good afternoon, everyone. It's Jim here at Cheetah Deal. We're back after a half-term break, back for another five or six sessions of our regular weekly A-level business study live streams. And two familiar faces joining me today. Welcome back to Pete in the middle, Mike on the right. Afternoon, Jim. Afternoon, everyone. Hi, Jim. Afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. And, uh, well, I'm going to pass over to you guys. I know we've got lots and lots to get through in this next 30, 35 minutes or so. Uh, but if you've not joined us before on one of these sessions, welcome. Uh, this is uh, a series of interactive activities that are designed to help us revise some really core concepts and topics that we think will underpin success in exams next summer. And today's a really important one, profit, the measurement of profit, profitability. Uh, so you get a chance if you're joining us live to use the live chat, please do, do have a go. Type your answers and or questions into the live chat and any other comments you wish to pass on to myself, uh, Mike and Pete. And uh, that will help us see how you're getting on with the questions. If you're watching on uh, Catch Up and Replay and hundreds of students each week watch these uh, non-live, then you can't use the live chat to, to inform us, but hopefully you'll have a good go at the questions. Maybe use the pause function on the video to give yourself some extra time because our live students are under a lot of time pressure today. Who's leading us off? Mike, Pete, what are we starting with? It's me and we're starting with a uh, big reveal, Jim. Okay, should we get going? Yes, please. Okay, so the aim of this first activity is dead straightforward. Can you work out what's hidden behind the question mark before all of the clues are revealed? And we're looking for a business name here. Okay, so let's have the first clue, please, Jim. This business was founded in 2011. So relatively new, not much to go off there. Is it Apple? I thought that someone might come in with that to begin with um well we will see won't we well i don't think it is it was found in 2011 started off as a photography business okay 
So that's our second clue. It started off as a photography business, so it's changed. There's a clue. Clue three, please, Jim. But it now produces apparel, so things you wear, which is an Italian take on American culture. Any thoughts here? So we've got a little bit more information. Some of you might want to just go for a stab in the dark, I guess some, some brand names that you might be familiar with that certain people may have been photographed wearing over the past few weeks. Let's take a look at clue number four. A pair of sliders is priced at £95 on the business's website. So someone like me that's very price sensitive may not be indulging in a pair of these. I don't know if I could pull sliders off anyway. Okay, so £95 for a pair of sliders. I think there might be a few people typing. We'll just give you a couple more minutes. Nike, Nike. Good guess, Caitlin. But it's not, unfortunately. Thanks for getting the ball rolling. Let's have a look at clue number five. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, was photographed wearing these prior to his budget speech. So he was doing some preparation and he was snapped by some photographers of a well-known newspaper. Armani, good guess. We'll just see if anyone else chips in with anything before we reveal all. This is quite difficult, yeah. Okay, let, let's go for it. Let's reveal all. Palm Angels. This is the business that we were looking for, Palm Angels. Okay, and it was these sliders that Rishi Sunak was photographed in um, to before giving his budget speech. Okay, so the Chancellor photograph wearing sliders and socks. Thank you for those contributions. Um, really quite difficult. I'll now pass you over to Mike. Thanks, Peter. So uh, next activity is called Altered Vowels, and you're going to see some keywords on the screen, each of which has had the vowels changed to an alternative. So the vowels have been swapped for something different. Can you work out what the keywords are? First one's on the screen for you. Answers in the chat window, please. So remember, the vowels have been changed. The A's, the E's, the I's, the O's, the U's. Answer in the chat window, please. I think this one's a nice little warm up. Let's have a look at the answer, please, Jim. And it is, of course, variable costs. Well done, those of you who got it right. I think, Ben, you were first in with that. Let's do another one of those. Slightly harder one, perhaps. Well done, all those that got the previous one right. Some some answers still coming through on my chat window. But the, for the second one here, give us your thoughts. Three words. Remember, all the vowels have been changed. Oh, well done, Caitlin. I think we have a correct answer, Jim. Operating profit margin indeed. Really well done. And lots of other correct answers coming through as well. Next one. I think this one perhaps slightly more straightforward after the last one. Answer in the chat window. You do have to type a whole word here, so um, may take a little while. Well done, Amelia. Yeah. So the correct answer here is profitability. Lots of correct answers. I think Amelia was first. Couple more. There's a theme to these. So I won't, uh, I won't try and pronounce this. I'm not going to get caught uh, doing that, but uh, put your answer in the chat window, please. Two words. Uh, good guess there from, uh, from Graham. The correct answer is through, I think. Um, and I'm trying to work out who was fastest. Um, ben again. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, Tom was, was fastest there. Gross profit. Well done. Last one of these. Tremendous. Two words again. What's this one? Put the answer in the chat window. Two word term, the vowels have been changed. And I think Ben, quickest again. Well done. Closely followed by lots of other people. Great answers, folks. Please keep contributing. Please keep them coming. Well done with altered vowels. Let's do something a little bit uh, more uh, exam focused, I think. What 
uh, we've got some multiple choice questions. Um, and the first one is on the screen. What is the correct formula to calculate the gross profit margin? Correct formula to calculate gross profit margin. A, sales revenue divided by gross profit times 100. B, gross profit divided by sales revenue. C, gross profit divided by sales revenue times 100. Or D, sales revenue divided by gross profit. Answers coming through already. It's just a letter here, remember, A, B, C or D. So you're, um, you're not going to have to type nearly as much. A, B, C or D. Um, I think Ben was fastest through here. Let's have a look at the answer, please, Jim. And the answer, of course, is C. Gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sales revenue and then times by 100. Gross profit divided by sales revenue times by 100. Make sure you get those around the right way. And learning formulae is so important uh, to help you with calculations. Another multiple choice question for you then. We'll call this question two. Last year, a business achieved sales revenue of £250,000. The gross profit margin of the business was 60%. What was the cost of sales for the business last year? A, £100,000. B, £150,000. C, £175,000. And D, £200,000. A, B, C or D, what's the correct answer, please? Use the formula from the previous question. Thank you, Alex. Got an answer through from you. Caitlin, one from you as well. Lots of answers coming through. A whole range here. I can see at least three different uh, suggestions. So we're not so confident with this. Let's have a look at the answer and, uh, and see why it is what it is. Uh, well done, Alex. You were first in with the correct answer. It's £100,000. So remember at the, uh, the income statement, the profit and loss account, sales revenue minus cost of sales will give gross profit. If the gross profit margin is 60%, it means that 60% of sales revenue becomes gross profit. In other words, that 40% of that figure is going to be cost of sales. So 40% multiplied by 250,000 or 0 0.4 multiplied by 250,000 it is 100,000 a tricky question as Graham correctly points out but a good one well done if you got that right if you didn't I'm hoping the explanation there will have clarified it for you one more multiple choice which of the following would likely lead to a lower net profit margin for a manufacturer so we're looking at net profit margin now which of the following would lead to a lower net profit margin for a manufacturer? A, higher labour productivity. B, reduced wastage. C, ending the production of an unprofitable product range. Or D, a fall in capacity utilisation. Answer in the chat window, please. A, B, C or D. Thank you to those who've already contributed. Lots of answers coming through. A few more seconds. I think we've got general agreement. Let's have a look at the answer, please, Jim. It is, of course, D, a fall in capacity utilisation. All of the others would likely lead to a higher net profit margin. So it must be the fall in capacity utilisation. Really well done. Thanks very much for your contributions. Peter, I'll hand over to you for the next activity. Thanks, mate. That was great, wasn't it? Some really challenging questions there. Here we've got a 60 second challenge. So you can have 60 seconds or one minute to have a go at the calculation that's on screen and add your answers to the chat window. So last year, a business had total costs of £800,000, of which £240,000 were fixed. The business sold 200,000 units, priced at £16 per unit. What was the variable cost per unit last year? If we can start the clock, please, Jim.
Excellent. Great stuff uh, to quote Jim back in the studio. You lot definitely are on fire. Um, we've got a full house of correct answers there. Let's take a look at how we got there. So we need to find the total variable costs. We're told that total costs are 800,000. We're going to subtract the fixed costs from that. So take away the 240,000. That leaves us with 560,000 pounds. Okay, so if we're going on a per unit basis, we're going to divide those total variable costs by the number of units produced, 200,000. And that gives us our variable cost per unit of two pounds and 80 pence. I think Ben was the first one there. Well done, Ben. I'll take my heart off to you, but followed uh, closely by Swish after that. Well done, folks. The level of engagement has been absolutely fantastic so far. Keep it up. If we can now take a look and dig out some exam gold. When completing calculation questions, this is something that um, we, I always say to, to my classes and always get them to do it on a line by line basis. Um, always show you're working out that way. The, it, might be a situation where you get the final answer wrong but you may be awarded some marks if the examiner sees some evidence of knowledge and understanding of the concept that's being tested in the question okay it might even be the case that you write the formula down you're not going to be unlikely that you'll get marked for the formula but it's the knowledge and understanding that's implicit in your actual calculations that's important for you to show so always show you're working because it can help you okay i'll now pass you over to Mike for true or false. Thanks, Pete. Absolute 24 karat uh, exam gold there. Thank you so much for that. Um, next activity is called true or false. Um, and that's because you need to decide whether the statement on the screen is true or false. All you need to do is put a T or an F in the chat window. Some have already done so. First question is on the screen. A fixed cost never changes. Is that true or is it false? True or false, a, a T or an F will do. You can type the whole word if you want to, or just a T or an F, I will work it out. Thank you for the contributions we've had so far. The answer to this, of course, fixed cost never changes, is false. Not everybody agreed on that. Now, a fixed cost doesn't change with output, doesn't change relative to how much a business produces. But of course, fixed costs can change. Rent could change from year to year, for example. So fixed costs don't change with output, but it's not true to say a fixed cost never changes. Well done those who got it right. And some explanations in the chat window as well. Here's a slightly longer one for you. A business estimates that this year it will achieve a net profit of 120,000 pounds. The number of units sold this year is estimated to be 300,000 units at a selling price of five pounds per unit. Based on this information, the estimated net profit margin this year is 8%. So calculation to do here, and then decide whether that, that is true or if it's false. Have a few seconds on this. Good to practice working under time pressure, but do give yourself a realistic amount of time. Answers starting to come through. So we need to work out, first of all, what the sales revenue will be, and then we can work out the net profit margin based on that, and then decide whether it will or will not be 8%, whether that is true or whether it's false. Let's have a look at the answer, please, Jim. It is, of course, true. If we work out the uh, sales revenue, 300,000 units at five pounds each, 1,500,000, the net profit divided by the sales revenue times 100 will give an answer of 8%. So it is true. Well done if you got that right. True or false, an operating profit margin of 5% means that for every one pound of sales revenue, 95 pence is operating profit. Operating profit margin of 5% means that for every one pound of sales revenue, 95 pence is operating profit. Is that true or is it false? We're getting the hang of this single letter thing. Well done for the answers so far. General agreement. Yeah, let's have a look at the answer. Well done, everyone. I think we're, we're, um, we're all right, actually. We're all correct. Operating profit margin of 5%. It means that for every one pound of sales revenue, five pence is operating profit. Operating profit margin of 5% means that five pence of every one pound of sales revenue is operating profit. Really important to understand not just how to, to, to calculate 
uh, operating profit margin or any of these calculations, uh, make sure you understand what the figures show. The implications for business is where most of the marks are going to be awarded. One more true or false. Total contribution minus fixed costs equals profit. Total contribution minus fixed costs equals profit. Is that true or is it false? Simply give us a T or an F in the chat window, please. Thank you, Caitlin. First in with an answer. We'll see in a moment whether it's correct or not. So is this true or false? Total contribution minus fixed costs equals profit. The answer here, of course, is true. Total contribution minus fixed costs is another way of calculating profit. Total contribution is the total amount contributed when sales revenue, we've taken away um, variable cost per unit from sales revenue, multiplied by the number of units sold. So this is another way of calculating profit and it's true, okay? And it's a useful formula to know. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the reminder, G. Next activity is another 60 second challenge. I'm gonna give you a whole minute on this one. The question is on the screen, a washing machine manufacturer sells its washing machines to retailers for 200 pounds per washing machine. The variable cost per washing machine is 40% of the selling price. Yearly fixed costs are 1,500,000 pounds. This year, the manufacturer estimates that it will sell 20,000 washing machines. The task is to calculate the estimated monthly profit for this year. 60 seconds, here we go. Really interesting reading the comments in the chat window, seeing the answers coming through and seeing um, that uh, that some of you are, are spot on, some of you maybe less uh, less so, but but uh, in some cases you're actually able to, um, to notice the errors you might have made. And they're common mistakes. The whole point of doing this is to give you practice um, so you can make mistakes now um, and learn from that before you sit any exams. So the answer here is on the screen. The estimated monthly profit this year is £75,000. Note the question was monthly profit, not yearly. And I think a few of you fell into that trap. If you ended up with a figure of £900,000, then you've got the annual profit rather than the monthly profit. Two different ways of working this out. Remember, we've got the, the contribution method that we looked at before in our previous true or false, in our final true or false question. Um, the most common method perhaps would be to do revenue minus costs. If you look at the top of the, the screen there, the total estimated sales revenue is four million pounds. The variable cost per washing machine, remember it's 40% of the selling price, so it's 80 pounds per washing machine. They sell 20,000 of them. So the total variable costs, 1,600,000. So the total costs then come to 3.1 million, 3 million, 100,000. If we take the total costs away from the sales revenue, we get the annual profit at 900,000 and divide that by 12 to get 75,000 pounds. A lot to do in 60 seconds. If you're able to do that in 60 seconds, you're doing really well. The contribution method though is probably quicker. So the contribution method at the bottom of the screen there uh, is probably a quicker way of doing it. Okay, really well done if you got to the correct answer. If you didn't quite get there, hopefully you can see what else you needed to do. If you couldn't do it in a minute, please do not worry. Um, 60 seconds is ambitious. Peter, over to you for your favourite, I think. 
Cheers, Mike. I'm glad you saved this one for me. So here we've got an activity called 10 second countdown. We're going to give you 10 seconds, not much, to state in the chat window three ways of improving profit. Okay. If we can go for lift off now, please, Jim. Lift off will start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. So not a lot of time there. I'll give you a couple more seconds to see if any answers come through. We've got a few that have appeared in the chat window. Thanks to those people so far. Some really interesting ideas. And some that make some nice links to other parts of your A-level specifications. Let's take a look at the three that we picked out. We picked out increase the quantity of units sold, increase the selling price, and reduce costs okay and many of those answers um did link to uh, decreasing costs um to start off with and um i think we pretty much got all three of those in the chat window so well done thanks for that okay thomas has said increase in productivity would this be right um if the increase in productivity led to a fall in unit cost then we could link that point in as well thomas that's absolutely correct it's all about that chain of reason that you would um develop from that. Let's have a look at some chains of reason in terms of our explanations, because not only do we need to identify these methods, we need to be comfortable at explaining them. Okay. Now, you may go for um, slightly different explanations. That's okay. Um, Graham's just put a, a really helpful comment in the chat window there um, about productivity. Thank you for that, Graham. Let's start off with increasing the quantity sold. That should lead to increased profit, but there's an assumption we have to make here. We have to assume that the sales price, the selling price is not lowered. And there may also be other costs associated with increasing the quantity sold. So in order to stimulate that increase in demand, there may be a marketing campaign, for example. Okay, so with these chains of reason, always state any assumptions that we're making to help the reader of your work out with your thought process. Second point, increasing the selling price will lead to higher sales revenue. But again, we're assuming the quantity sold doesn't fall in response to this increase in price. Now, here is a nice link that we can make to another area of the specification. This depends on the price elasticity of demand for the product. Obviously, if we've got price elastic demand and we increase the selling price because there's a number of different substitutes that are likely to be available for that product, then the quantity demanded would fall more than proportionately for the price increase. So be careful there, always link in price elasticity if you can. It's a nice counterbalance to your analysis. Point number three, reducing costs directly translates into higher profits. But again, be aware that a reduction in variable costs may result in lower quality. Okay, The business might take shortcuts, they might use cheaper suppliers, and that could have an impact on the number of units sold and subsequently sales revenue. So thank you very much for those contributions. I hope you found those chains of reasoning useful. You might want to take a screenshot or download the PowerPoint afterwards to add to your notes. Thanks, Peter. So we're going to do another 60 second challenge. This one's uh, concerning index numbers, which is always a, uh, a favorite. So the table below shows the index of sales revenue for a retail business and yearly cost of sales. The base year here is 2017 when sales revenue was two million pounds. Your task is to calculate the gross profit margin in 2020. 60 seconds on this, best of luck.
Good stuff. Well done. I can see some answers in the chat window already. A few more seconds if you're still working. Um, and uh, don't panic if you're not anywhere near done because 60 seconds to do that is uh, is quite ambitious, I think. Thanks to the responses we've had so far. Let's have a look at the answer then, please, Jim. And I think Ben was the first in with a correct answer, which is very impressive because it's a challenging question. Note the wording of the question. This is a common mistake. You're asked to calculate the gross profit margin. The word margin is key here because gross profit margin is obviously different to gross profit. I can see that some people have calculated the gross profit, which is a stepping stone towards gross profit margin, but it's not the final answer. So first of all, we work out the sales revenue in 2020. We know that in the base year of 2017, it's £2 million. So in 2020, the index number is 110, so it's 10% higher. So £2 million multiplied by 1.10 gives a sales revenue figure of £2.2 million. The gross profit in 2020, therefore, is 2.2 million minus the cost of sales, 1,540,000. And lots of you were able to calculate that. We then put that into our gross profit margin formula right from the start of the, this session. Multiply that by 100 and we get an answer of 70%. So very well done if you got that far. If you didn't, hopefully that will show you how to, how to do it. Bit more exam gold for you. Remember in an exam, you may be required not only to calculate profitability ratios, but also interpret the results of the calculations and apply them to a given context. As I said before, you need to go further than just being able to do the, the calculations. It's essential that, you fully un uh, essential that you fully understand what the results mean in relation to the business in the case study or the extract. So it's not just enough to, to be able to do the calculations, make sure you're able to interpret the results and give them uh, or put them in context. Index numbers are often an area that uh, the students find challenging, so worth spending a bit of time on those. Pete, I think there's time for one more 60 second challenge, don't you? Okay, thanks for that, Mike. What we've got coming up here is another 60 second challenge. Olivia Hardy is the owner of Floral and Hardy, a florist located in Sunderland that sells bouquets of flowers for eight pounds. Last year, the business sold 6,000 bouquets. The variable cost of a bouquet was one fifth of the selling price and the business made a profit of 10,000 pounds. Your job here in 60 seconds or a minute is to calculate the fixed costs of the business last year. Answer in the chat window, please. Can we start the timer, Jim? Okay, thank you for those contributions. Um, if you did not get that in 60 seconds, don't worry about it. There's an awful lot to do, so don't worry whatsoever. We'll take you through the solution and you can compare your thoughts to ours. Thank you for those of you who have put an answer in. If we can have a look at the solution, please, Jim, thank you. So the first thing that we could need to do is to work out the sales revenue from last year. 6,000 bouquets sold multiplied by a price of eight pounds per bouquet, 48,000 pounds. We then need to work out those variable costs. We told, we're told the variable cost per unit is one pound 60. Um, and sorry, we're told the variable cost last year, at eight, eight pounds multiplied by one pound 60. That gives us a total variable cost figure for last year of 6,000 multiplied by one pound 60 of 9,600 pounds. We're told as well the profit for last year, £10,000. Now, we can use that information and rearrange our formula and work backwards. Fixed costs of last year, 
are therefore £48,000, the sales revenue, and we're going to subtract the profit and the variable costs, and that gives us £28,400. Well done, Ben and MJ. You got the correct answer there in the chat window. I'll take my hat off to you if I was wearing one. The other way, and Graham mentioned this in the chat window earlier, is to use the contribution method. Okay, C calculate the contribution per unit. Eight pounds, take away one pound sixty, gives us six pounds forty. We then work out the total contribution from last year, which is thirty eight thousand four hundred pounds. Subtracting the profit that was made will give us twenty eight thousand four hundred pounds for last year's fixed costs. Well done, all there. Some excellent work. Thanks, Pete. Our final activity today is uh, called short straw, and your task here is to avoid the short straw. So you're about to see a question with four possible answers that can be ranked. Your task is to choose the third ranking item. So you're going to rank them in order and your task is to pick the one that you think is third on that list. Award yourself points. So if your choice finished first, you'll get one point. If it finished second, you'll get two points. If you get the right one, the one that finished third, you get four points. But if you pick the short straw and pick the one that finished fourth, you get nothing. So put these in order, Tesco's most profitable financial year based on operating profit, Tesco's most profitable financial year in millions of pounds, 2020, 2021, 2018-2019, 2017-2018, 2019-2020. Put them in order and then try to pick the one that you think is third. Okay, and you can put your answer in the chat window, please. Just the year that you think comes third. So you might put 2017 stroke 18, for example. Put them in order and then pick the one that you think is third. Remember, you want to avoid the short straw. You want to avoid the one that comes last. Thanks for the answer we've had so far. Lots of answers coming through. So you're just going to put in the year that you think is third in that list. So the one that you think comes third. Some good answers coming through. Let's have a look at uh, the correct ranking so we can pick out what is third. So 2020-21 is the correct answer. One million sorry, 1,736 million pounds in operating profit um, for 2020-21. Uh, for um, then 2019-20 was the highest on the list. 2018-19 was second. And the short straw was 2017-2018. And I think looking at the answer in the chat window there, everyone was able to avoid the short straw. Well done. Extremely good contributions. Thanks so much. So, well, they, I mean, they make a lot of money, don't they, Tesco's? So that's the wrong phrase, isn't it? Poor use of business terminology. They make a high operating profit. Indeed they do, yes. Incredible business. Fantastic. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just sat here absolutely gobsmacked by the, the speed and the accuracy of uh, the responses to those, uh, particularly the calculation questions. Phenomenal. Yeah, some really, really good answers. Really good yeah. answers. Great effort, folks. Well done. Yeah, well done. And um, well, if you enjoyed the session, if you found it useful, even if you found some of the some of the calculations on the tricky side, don't worry. Well done for having a go. But before you um, worry too much about it, please give us a thumbs up uh, to help uh, promote this session and others like it on YouTube. Maybe you've come, come across these sessions by finding them on YouTube for the first time. Uh, huge thanks to Pete and Mike for putting a fantastic session together. Uh, and uh, well, we're back again this time next week. It's our regular slot here on a Tuesday at four thirty for A Level Business Study live streams. Don't forget, if you go to tutortu.net forward slash live, you can see the address there on the screen. You can go back over all the previous sessions we've done. I think we've done something like 30, 35 A Level Business sessions in twenty twenty one. You can download all of the powerpoints, or maybe just pick one or two of the topics uh, and just uh, watch the replay videos and uh, have a go might be useful for some mocks or assessments coming up later this term. Uh, any closing comments, Pete, Mike, before we say farewell to our live audience? Just a big thank you for all the contributions. Great to be back. Yeah, same from me. Thank you very much, folks. 
Superb stuff. Many thanks, everyone. Uh, let, ev let, all, let all your mates know about this regular slot on a Tuesday. We'll be back here this time next week for the next A-Level Business st Study live stream. So until then, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye now.